It is Hot 107.9 Atlanta's number one hip-hop station. ATL's hottest party boy, Deuce. I'm in the building, and I got a special guest with me, Big Bean. What's up, the biggest? You know what I'm saying? Gail Bean is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, man? What's up? Real Eastside representative on the check-in. Real Eastside. I ain't seen you since, what, Little Baby Little Dolly? Baby's thing. Yeah. yeah, that's actually where we met at. Yes. And I don't know how we just gravitated towards it. It's like the East Side just... Just brought us together. Listen, real, recognize real. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. So you got a lot of shows right now. You're doing well and a lot of, it's like you don't miss. Thank you. You don't miss. You know what I'm saying? You on the TV all the time. Like, Hey, my mama told me favor ain't fair. Yeah. Tell them again. Favor ain't fair. And so, I ain't gonna lie, I'm in my bag right now. Real? So I feel like anybody from Atlanta, though, like when you're from the city, I'm from Stone Mountain. Mm-hmm. Let's just be clear and correct. Um... We, however we move, we move with the city behind us. Right. So we keep that energy and we put it into everything. Mm-hmm. And we can't help but win. I'm trying to tell you. So check it out. So you went to Stevenson High School. Mm-hmm. How was it? That's on my chest. I'm a Jaguar. Oh, man. Let's talk about Stevenson, man. How, how was school going to Stevenson, though? I mean, it's like everybody. You you know how they do, like, the high school checking in. Mm-hmm. Like, Stevenson is the one, not you, the two. See, I went to MLK, so I, I got we got beef. You know what I'm saying? I but mean, it ain't no can real you beef. Really have beef with the greatest? It ain't, it ain't. <laughs> we got the best band. We got some of the best sports. We, we was rivals the... for a while though. Okay, it, it was love though, but we were still rivals. Like people it's came love. out, people people came out to see our games. Now this is the thing: can't nobody, can't nobody outside of the city talk trash about MLK? No, because I'm a hop down. No, like and, and, and likewise. likewise. You know what I'm saying I'm gonna speak up for you. Like, see, no, y'all got to chill. I appreciate you know that. You know what I'm saying? But let's get into it though. Um. You in the acting world right now. I am. Do you feel like you've made it yet? No. What? No, I don't. I feel like I'm doing good. I'm grateful for where I'm at. I'm appreciative. But, man, so I act, write, and produce. Mm. And people have been encouraging me to direct. I'm not really confident in that yet. I'm going to wait. But I think at, in the future, I'm going to dabble in that right. bag. I'm going to get in that bag. I'm going to jump in. Like, Michael B. Jordan with Creed. You got it, though. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? But have you had moments yet where you, like, yeah, because I know them checks coming in now. Come on, Gail. <laughs> Come on, Gail. You ain't making no $12 an hour, Gail. I ain't making no. I'm in a different tax bracket. See what I'm saying? So it's. I'm sure, you know. Eh, I feel like, good. I feel good. I feel blessed to be able to do what I love and to make sure, like, the family eating. Right. Like, ain't nobody in my family starving at That's all. That's what's up, man. So I'm happy about that. I live comfortable. I kind of move and do whatever I want. But I do feel I have a lot further to go. You know what I'm saying? I I don't feel like I made it, but I feel like I ain't starving. Nah, I feel you. So what was the first thing you did when you, like, really got your first check for real? Like, your first, like, this check don't look like these other checks I haven't seen before. Ooh, I think I just recently, I just recently got a check to sit down and was like, whoa. To sit down? To sit down, to sit down, to, like, have, so I got a project, right? Okay. And we can't, I can't elaborate can't too much on okay. I can't disclose. I understand. But they gave me a check to, like, not do nothing else. Or if, if something else comes, at least ask them okay, for so permission. For permission. I yeah. Guess. So it was one of, with that check, I was just like, oh, sh- I haven't done nothing with it yet. I'm not going to lie. Like a chill check. I just put it in the bank. Just chill. Let's yeah. Just chill check. <laughs> yeah. Just relax. Don't yeah. work. Yeah. Just enjoy your money. Yeah. That, that put me in a nice, nice little situation. So let's talk about your acting journey from the beginning, because you've done, you've been in this thing from what about two thousand what? 30, I moved to 16? LA in twenty thirteen. Okay, so before that was acting, what you was going to do? You knew you was going to do that. I knew I wanted to do it, and my mother was just like, you know, she a teacher. She okay. come from the generation of go to school, get a job, get a man. So I had to like convince and just show how how God worked, okay. because she knew and she would put it pray over me and stuff, but. Mm. Sometimes when you're venturing off into something that's unbeknownst to your family or to your friends, they're not as confident in it. And not that they don't care for you or they don't trust you or they're a hater. They just, it's foreign to them. Gotcha. So I had to, um, I first started taking acting serious in like 2011, Mm -hmm. but I didn't move to L.A. until 2013. And that's when it was like, okay, it's up. I'm here now. So what was your, um, what was your first gig, your first acting gig? So not many people have seen it. It's this show. It's this movie called At Mamu's Feet. Okay. And I was in it with Tony, uh, Tommy 
What's Tommy's last name from Martin? I can't think of his oh, last Tommy, name. Oh, Tommy, uh, Strong. No, is it Strong? No, that, that's, on the, that's on the show with Strong. But Tommy. I was in it with yeah, Tommy. Yeah, I played yeah, his yeah. illegitimate daughter. Okay. And I was in it with, it's a gospel group for Eva Jones. Okay. So Dominique and a lot of the guy, a lot of the group members from the kids from Forever Jones, they're adults now, but they were in the movie with me. And so, that was like my first gig. We shot that in Louisiana. I got that. I was paid five hundred dollars for the movie. I think it went to like DVD, straight to DVD, Walmart. Okay. And then my next big major project was this movie that went to Sundance. It went it did the film festival route. It was called Unexpected, where I play a pregnant teen and me and my teacher get pregnant at the same time. White teacher. My character was from Chicago. Yeah, it was a whole thing. That's hard. I'm gonna yeah, that that, that one put me like gave me the exposure I needed to really get some eyes on me. Okay, so the move to LA, what did that do for your career overall? I'm not gonna lie, I felt like in Atlanta I had reached the ceiling, mm-hmm. which is crazy because I hadn't done anything on TV. I was not, I was had not been in any films that were out and did a theatrical release. Mm-hmm. But everybody kind of knew me as just being like Gail, right? So. I would try to get representation with agents and managers. They would not give me the time of day. I mean, wouldn't even look at my stuff. Like, at least look at me and say I suck, right? Mm -hmm. I'll take that. But I had letters of recommendation. Shout out to Rodney Perry. He has been my mentor and been an amazing person. He wrote me a letter of recommendation for his reps at the time because he was co-hosting on the Monique show and doing amazing things. He's a hilarious comedian. And nobody would... They would look. They wouldn't look at me. They were like, "You don't have any credits." I don't have any credits, motherfucker, because I don't have no representation. <laughs> like, come on now. Yeah. Help me help myself. Yeah, thanks. So, I just felt like people weren't taking me serious, and I knew the city, but nobody was really like showing love. Like right. they loved me as just Gail, but Gail being the actress was like, "Come on now, we ain't never heard you act before." And I had been doing theater. Theater is my foundation. So I had friends come out to like my theater shows, but nobody in position to help me. So I said, okay, I need to move to Atlanta. I mean, I need to, I need to move to L.A. Because L.A. is not afraid to break a fresh face. I feel mm-hmm. like sometimes with Atlanta, I ain't going to lie. Like, sometimes people out here in the industry that gatekeep, mm-hmm. they dick ride. Like, they're not, yeah. they not trying to help break a new person. Y'all have the power to break new records, break new artists all the time. Right. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, in the acting world, they can break a fresh face and they don't. Because sometimes... The casting directors here, the managers here, the agents here have that fear of breaking bridges. They not really know sharks like that sometimes. Mm. And you have a few, but it is far and few in between, and you may not even be able to access them. So I said, let me go to L.A., where I know a tiny, tiny break in L.A. would be a huge break worldwide. So 2013, I moved. 2014, I booked... Unexpected. I got new reps. I booked Unexpected 2015. It was in the film festivals. Had new reps, Damn. new agent, like new number everything. one ma- management company. It was up. Damn, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. And now you got number one shows. Number one shows. Now Two number about, one shows. Man, man, come on. Let's say it again, man. <laughs> so let's talk about Snowfall. Yeah. All right, Wanda. Wanda. Wanda Bell. Well, now Wanda Simmons. Yeah, because you got married uh-huh. in Ghana. It's a wife. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I ain't going to lie. You... And uh, Damson, y'all the only reason I watched that show. I ain't gonna lie, I was I late. I was it. late to it, right? Uh huh. So once I got on, I'm like, "Yo, Gail on here." I was like, "All right, let me tap in." And I see, I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'm locked in now." I thank you. So with that, with that role, because you played a, a struggling drug addict, mm-hmm. how difficult was that role to get into? I'm gonna be honest. Everybody says like, "Oh, it's so hard." I mean, to me, it wasn't hard because it's not like I didn't come from that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, as black people, we've seen struggle. We've seen addiction. We've seen the throes and the thick of challenges and and vulnerability and moments of, of weakness. So I just tapped into what I've experienced, and then I did my research. Like, a long time ago, I watched a documentary out here in Atlanta called Jay is for Junkie by Greedmont Park. Fire. Fire documentary on addicts and Atlanta and you know, the truth of it, instead of, like, the clickbait stuff that we see online. Mm -hmm. And then I used to watch this thing called Soft White Underbelly on Mm -hmm. YouTube. So fire. It also covers addicts and homeless. And there was this one girl who, she's been on there about three times. Her name was Amanda. I seen the progression of her as an addict. Like, it was bad. And then, I mean, I I volunteer on Skid Row in L.A., so I got to see firsthand L.A. people. And then I have friends, one of my really good friends, one of my my best friends, Malcolm Mays. He's from L.A., like real L.A., dude. He plays. He used to play 
Kevin on Snowfall. Okay. And his character got killed. Now he played Lulu on Raising Canaan. Gotcha. So he was able to allow me to talk to some people. I was able to talk to some of John's people and John's from L.A. Just to get that real firsthand experience of what it was like in L.A. in the 80s. And I would ask questions. Mm -hmm. I talked to D-Ray about um, his mom struggled with drugs. So right. he gave me some of the things that he saw firsthand as well with her. That was like, nah, like, do this. And I'm always open. I can learn from anybody. Right. So I'm not one of those actors who's like, why are you talking to me? I'm going to allow people to tell me their thoughts, and then I'm going to just take it and go to God. And if it work, I'll keep it. And if it don't work, I'll throw it away. Right. But, yeah, I mean, I just did my research yeah, from, from firsthand personal stuff and, and asked questions. Yeah, you played the hell out of that role. Appreciate like, it. Good Lord. I'm like... Never did drugs before. That was, bro, I'm like, bro, like she played that role, like, Thank and then you. this even just slowed over to uh, P Valley, yeah, because that's the difficult. I heard you had to like train for like four months or something. I did, I did. Listen, I feel like there's nothing anybody can tell you to prepare you for the pole. <laughs> nothing, nothing. You have to really. At one point in time, I definitely cried and was gonna give the role back. For real? I came home. I told my dude, I was like, baby, I'm in over my head. I was like, I can't do this. I feel so bad. I done wrote Katori into believing in me. Like, I can't do this. This shit is hard, but it's harder than hard. I was like, I'm never going to get it. Like, I I, I thought it was over. Damn. But I learned. I learned. I showed him. And then one time I thought I had gained some success at yes. the pole. And I showed him the video. And he was like, baby, you need to go every day like it's your nine to five. Right. Don't go out there embarrassing us. Like, yeah, no. That's crazy. Four months four months and, and i had two a days sometimes that's ridiculous yeah that's ridiculous so check it out you um you got married in ghana on snowfall how is ghana ghana is fucking amazing because uh, i'm a traveler i like to travel have you been before no I've you gotta been go i've been going every year since 2016 and i got a house that'll be finished this year out there that i'm building for real yeah i got family that live over there that's hard yeah i seen the episode i'm like man that looks i gotta ask about that because no that it's a you ever been somewhere where like I mean, to me, Ghana is Atlanta times 10. And all you, the good. All the explain, good of you gotta Atlanta. You got to explain that. You got to explain that. Because huh? to me, Atlanta is one of the blackest cities, oh, right? Definitely. Like, Black I've Hollywood. been all over the world, and to me, no place is better than the city, right? Correct. So I go to Africa, go to Ghana. We the, minor, we the majority. Everywhere. Like, everywhere. Everywhere you go. You are the majority. It don't matter. It, 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 you know how, like, here in Atlanta, you can be in the city, but then if you mm -hmm. go to, like, Alpharetta or Marietta, you ain't the majority? Right. Everywhere. You can't step foot nowhere in Ghana and not be the majority. That's and it's, crazy. like, love, though. Like, it's love. Like, you ain't, you know, of course, naturally, when you're not from there, you're going to be watching out, but you could just feel the energy. Nobody's really there to harm you. It ain't, the police aren't like that. It's, it's legit love. It's everything can be handled with words. Mm. Everything can be handled with love. Everything can be handled with care. And you know, even if there is a misunderstanding, you can figure it out. That's it's nice. peaceful. People over there working no matter what. I've seen people who don't have no legs and they don't like this makeshift board working. Like not just on the street begging because they're uh, unable, mm. but they want to earn their keep. Right. That's hard. Mm -hmm. So. Let's talk about your most difficult scene you ever had to do, or one of them. Like, one that just sticks out where you like, I don't even know how I got through that, but I did it. Just one scene. Oh, it just, it just passed. This past Wednesday, 10 p.m., you know, Snowfall airs every Wednesday, uh -huh. 10 p.m. on FX. And I had a scene with Michael Hyatt. Okay. She plays Franklin's mother. Her name is Sissy on the show. Yep. She was from The Wire. Yep. So she, I already look at her as like a goat. And okay. anytime I had scenes of her, I was like, Lord, please just let me, let me do good. <laughs> um... That we were in the shelter upstairs, and Ooh, I was I talking to her about Alton. I was folding the blankets. Yep. Everybody been talking about yep. how I couldn't fold. I, I, I ain't gonna that. lie, that shit was hard as hell <laughs> to try to fold and act at the same time yeah. on be on cue. And then we was moving. I wasn't moving fast enough, so I was like, "Fuck it, I just gotta fold." Like yeah, and just throw like, the flip shit it real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was yeah. like, "Fuck it, I'm not gonna take the time." Um, that scene was really difficult. That day was extremely difficult. Mm. I was really frustrated, and. She was like, you're right where, she's so calm, and she just she's a pro, she's been at this for a long time. Mm. She was like, you're right where you're supposed to be, you're good. Everything that you're feeling. Because I was like, I'm just so frustrated, I'm so angry. Like, a lot was happening that day, even with, like, on set, that didn't have anything to do with the scene. Mm. And I was trying to just be calm, 
and like not pissed off about it and not take it out on anybody. Mm-hmm. And she was like, everything that you're going through, the character is going through. So it's okay. So channel it. Basically. Yes. And normally I do, but I felt like I felt like that was too much for the scene. I felt like what I was going through, I didn't want to even bring that energy. And she was like, you're good. You're good. And it's like, I always know my lines. I was just really frustrated that day. And it was such a difficult scene for me to get through. And then the fucking blankets. <laughs> I'm like, man, if these blankets don't, I don't know, it was just a bad day. And I, I never have bad days. Well, you played the role because I've seen the scene myself. So you Thank played, you. yeah, you played the hell out of that role. That was hard, though. So um, let's talk about your scholarships that you got going on. Oh, yes. So this will be the first year that I'm doing the scholarships. Mm-hmm. It's called All of My Love because mm-hmm. I'm a Delta. So we have All of My Love, My Peace and Happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, Delta was founded in 1913 by 22 founders. So I'm going to give 22, scholars, 22 scholarships to seniors of Metro Atlanta and Atlanta. In the amount of one thousand nine hundred thirteen dollars, that's nineteen thirteen. Um, and they just the only requirement is that they are seniors in Metro Atlanta or Atlanta area, and they gotta be black. That's dope. Like not even no discrimination type of situation. It's a uh, you know giving love and giving back. I think there's so many things that are for all inclusive, but even though it's inclusive, for some reason we still get excluded. Mm-hmm. So this is to make sure that we are not excluded if it is for us. Right. And it's called All of My Love. And, yeah. Oh, with the scholarship, they just have to be going to college. Okay. Now, I have another, and it doesn't matter what college they go to. It doesn't matter how they apply the scholarship. It doesn't have to, like, specifically go to books mm-hmm. or to housing. It just has. They just have to have some sort of acceptance letter to college. Now, if they decide they don't want to go, cool, that's on them. They'll still get the money. But they have to have applied, and they have to have an acceptance letter to have that option. Got you. Okay. And then I'm doing something at Stevenson High School, you know, my high school, Mm -hmm. which I started in 2020, right before pandemic. I started January 2020. There's a financial literacy class that Coach Weaver teaches. Shout out to Coach Weaver. He's an amazing, amazing teacher at Stevenson and football coach. So he invites like alum and just different people to come speak to the class. Mm. And in 2020, January 2020, he invited me to come speak to his class. And I, since they're learning about savings and everything, I told them however much whoever saves the most out of from January to May when they graduate, I'll match it, whatever it is. And this is applicable to any student. They don't have to be a senior. It could be whatever grade, freshman, sophomore, whatever student is in his class. And then... There's no set amount. Whatever you save, they have to do check-ins with him and show. And it's supposed to teach them, like, the importance of saving, the importance of financial responsibility, and the importance of just showing up. Because, one, I'm not going to lie, in 2020, the winner got about, it was slightly over $5,000. And I just wrote him a check and matched it, whatever he had saved. Okay. There was someone else in the class who saved more than him but did not turn their – did not turn their numbers in. Damn. And Coach even extended it a week for the guy. So that's when I try to Lazy, tell people, yeah. like, showing up. Yeah. Like, accountability, like, yeah. it's so simple. That's half the battle. Literally, you would have had double your money. You would have had 10 <laughs> Gs. I don't know how much he saved, but yeah, if Buddy but saved five dang, and I matched yeah. his five, then you would have had at least 10. Fitting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's something I do do, and I'm going to Stevenson High School tomorrow. I'll let the students know. I'm going to talk with them, you know, just because I think it's very important giving back to where we're from. I went to Charles Drew High School last year, and one of the students asked, why are you here? Why are you here, like, at our school? I said, because I was, y'all. And I'm very grateful for what California has done for me, what the industry has done for me. But I think it's important I bless home because that's what really made me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, L.A. gave me the opportunities and opened the doors. New York gave me opportunities and opened doors. But the person that I am to be able to sustain myself in this industry, to have longevity in this industry, that came from here. Right. So I want to pour into here. I'll, I I feel like I do my just do in L.A., right. but it's important that I do in Atlanta. Bring it back home. Because I want them to know that I'm no different than them. They no different than you. Right. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. I want to congratulate you too. I heard you got, you know what I'm saying? I heard you got, you got, you got engaged on that thing, you know what I'm saying? Uh, engaged in real life? Uh, that's what I heard. Who Is said you, that? I heard, you been, I heard you was engaged or something. You, that's what I heard. What? Was you, are you engaged? I'm not engaged. You're not engaged? I'm not single. But you, do, but you do got a man. I got a man. Okay, so let's talk about relationships then. How is relationships in the work side, like, He's dating an actress that has crazy hours, like, mm -hmm. than a normal person. I mean, I think everything is communication. I feel every single person in the world has some sort of insecurity. You're going to have niggas say, I ain't insecure. You're going to have girls say, I'm real secure. But anybody is going to have a moment of insecurity, and I feel like it's just a thing of communication and reassuring your partner. Like, hey, you know, this is what it is. For example, we went to Boosie Prom. Mm -hmm. I... Do not know Lil Duval at all. That was my very first time meeting him. Mm. We took a picture, like a prom pose picture. I woke up the next morning, that shit everywhere. Oh, Lord. I said I, I shared it with my dude and was like, hey, just so you, FYI, I took this picture with Lil Duval. Yeah. That shit done went everywhere. Right. Just so you, he's aware. Right. Because I think what's big is that nobody wants to find out some shit. Even if it's not true and then they have to ask you questions, they just don't want to find out from another source. Right. So we good. Like, I let him know, like, maybe I had to um, do this kissing scene. You ain't got to watch that. You ain't got to watch that episode. Or, But we're we're good. And then, of course, I do feel that, you know, I don't post my dude. Right. Like, sometimes on my story, but I've never posted him on my page. Okay. Um, well, at least not a picture of me and him. So people yeah. wouldn't know. <laughs> Because yeah. I do feel that sometimes when people are taking and people know your business, they try to sabotage oh, what's yeah, good. you know that. The Instagram is not for relationships. It's not. Keep your business private. If yeah. you like it, if you love it, keep it to yourself. So we good, though. We good. That's we not saying. engaged, but we good. I mean, but maybe you speaking into my hey, future. Hey. Maybe put, you know something I don't know. Listen, put it on, put it Listen if I'm asked, the answer is yes. Okay. Just just so we're clear. If anybody ain't asked me yet because they hesitate because they think I won't say yeah, the answer is yes. Okay. Hey, say no more. <laughs> So, with that being said, you said um, watching your own scenes. Do you watch your own stuff on TV? I heard, like, some actors don't be doing that. Like A lot of actors don't. Do you watch yourself? I do. Sometimes or all the time? Like, if okay. you know Snowfall coming on, you like, hey, y'all, come on, get, get on the no, couch. No, I do. I'm, I'm usually like, okay, Snowfall coming on, so I need to have my day finished by 8, so I can be home at 10 to watch it, so I can live tweet. But, nah, I'm not going to lie, I watch all my stuff. Because <laughs> I want to know. I want to say, what could I have done Right. Different here or different there. Oh, you be critiquing yourself as you yeah. watch the show. It's never no just, let's just watch it. You're, you're in your head like. Oh, yeah, it's never no just, let's just watch it. No, nah, we're about to critique some shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, I be critiquing. Yeah. I be critiquing. And then when other people critique, I'm like, okay, I, I, I feel you. I yeah. feel you on that. Like I said, people been critiquing about that blanket. Yeah. Like, I'm like, damn. And I, that was one thing I watched but did not pay attention to. So then I had to go back and watch it. And I was like. It was a thick-ass blanket. Damn, though. that blanket is folded like. <laughs> Like, she don't fold. Yeah. Like, and I'm a, I'm a folder. That's crazy. So, P Valley, season two, is it? Season two is out. Okay. Is it? It's out when? Cause I, no, season two is out. So I'm on season, season two. So No, season three. I'm sorry. Season three. Let's go to season three. When is season three coming out? Man, 2024. God. I know. I know. I know. Come on now. <laughs> I know. Well, it takes a long... That scared the shit out of me. It takes a <laughs> long time. To film it. It's okay. the show that I think last time it took us like eight, nine months. Are y'all filming right now? No. Uh, but they're in the writer's room. They're writing. We I mean, got at least some they in, At least they in the room. At least they in the room. <laughs> We're supposed to start back up this summer. Okay. So, and there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. Like I was telling people, there's a possible writer's strike about to happen. A possible director's strike about to happen. So we don't even know for sure. We're supposed to start filming this summer. We hope and we pray and then hopefully, you know, with COVID, COVID caused a lot of things to shut down. Mm -hmm. So hopefully COVID is not an issue this year. So I got a question. How is uh, Nico, a.k.a. Uh, Uncle Clifford, on set? Oh, Nico is amazing. Let me tell you, Nico is very, he, just how he is the, well, Nico is a he, but Uncle Clifford is a she. Yeah. So just how Uncle Clifford is like the mother to everybody Nico is like the father to everybody on set. Okay. Like the caretaker, making sure everybody is good, making sure you're straight, making sure you're in a good mood. If something needs to be handled, he's going to hop on the phone call yeah. and handle it for you. 
He see what he don't play. And Nico, Nico <laughs> from Detroit now. He a nigga. Yeah. He like he 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 ain't want to play with. Right. When you see him out of Uncle Clifford attire and he got on them Tims, that jersey and them shorts. Yeah. Yeah. He ain't playing with it. That's <laughs> crazy. So check it out. Before I let you go, we gotta play this game called This or That. Okay. So people can get to know you a little better. All right. Okay. Just some basic things. You know. Okay. Which one do you prefer? Oh Lord, they you know gonna hate me. Let's go. All right. So you ready? Mm-hmm. Um. So your wings. You like drums or flats? Ooh. Flat me. Uh, let's go travel or shopping? Travel. All right. Hip-hop or R&B? Yeah, take your time. <laughs> okay. Nine, 90s R&B, always. Okay. Hip-hop. Atlanta hip-hop. Okay. Okay, I'm not mad at that. Mm-hmm. Gail Bean, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate you, Gail. Because I don't know what's going on with that. We're going to keep it pushing. We're going to say Atlanta or L.A., and it's always Atlanta. Oh, for sure. You know yeah. that East Side. Stand yeah. Up. You know East that. Side. Now, I appreciate you. Thank you. You know you can come back anytime. Right. Anytime, whenever you got something going on, you know what I'm saying, pull up on me. Okay. I got you. Whenever you're premiering anything, okay. you know what I'm saying, anything <laughs> new popping off, okay. let me know. Tia. I'll be right here. Got you. you know what I'm saying? Let me get that phone call. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>